So this one's a, a little bit different. We're just gonna roll. We just wanna tell you our story and what got us to wanting to change up our entire existence in a way we never thought we would. But before we do, let's make sure your mic is facing the right way. There we go. Oh, she's gonna get emotional. This is one of those, we're gonna share. Here's the thing, in this video, we're gonna share with you some of the most horrible things that have happened to us. And it's not so you feel sorry for us, like, oh my gosh, we didn't know. I mean, our friends and family all know this stuff, but if you're new and don't know us personally, you don't know these things. And it's not so that you feel sorry for us or anything like that. It's so that you can see that you can take anything that happens to you and turn it into something good. Like there's things we have no control over and we're gonna share some of those things. And they're like, you know, they're heartbreaking and they still are. And we know that everybody watching this channel has things that happen to them. Death is a part of life and everybody's gonna have somebody die at some point. And sometimes it comes sooner than later. So we're gonna talk a little about that. But what, what do you do with that? What do you do with your life when tragedy strikes? What do you do when difficulties happen? Well, and that's what I was going to say. It's not just about difficulties. It's about, it's about making some conscious efforts. And there were times through some of the things that we've been through that I, I didn't think I would make it. I didn't think, I didn't, I didn't know how I was ever going to get out of some of these things. I think both of us were in those situations. We had no idea how we were going to survive yeah. some of this stuff that we've been through. And I was thinking about it today. Um, to actually today because you know Facebook does those memories oh, of yeah, things yeah. and like sometimes I'm like oh dang you know and yeah and and some of those like you just go back and it's like oh that's stuff you don't want to remember stuff you don't want to remember and let's we'll start with a little bit lighter the lighter side of this the one thing that we really wanted to escape was Groundhog Day we were living the same day every day I'm, I was you know driving to Burbank working on you know the biggest movies in the world it's like well I'm working on Marvel and Disney movies as an editor doing marketing for those but it was it was kind of a, a grind. It's a slog. I'm sitting in a 10 by 10 office in the dark with no windows and every day was starting to feel the same in spite of the fact there's a big movie. Like you get over that, that thing, you know, pretty quickly. And, you know, we'd get up early, we'd go to the gym. We used to get up at like five or 5.30 in the morning, go to the gym, you know, like five or six days a week. Then I'd go to work and I'd come home and drive through traffic and get late. And, and actually one of my sons, Nate, recently said, that yeah, you were gone all the time. I didn't even realize that I was gone all the time because well, you just do what you have to do. You just you just live the day. This is what you you know you you know you can say you're dealt or what you chose is is more accurate, and then you start living it every day, and it's like, well, wait, is this it? Do I just do this till I'm till I'm ninety? Right. And I and I've been thinking about this like for years. Like I don't want to be the guy that waits until I'm sixty-five, and that's not very far away. That's like, oh, I'm going to start living when I'm when I retire, or people think, well, I'm going to live when I get married, or when I have kids, or when the kids are grown up, or when the kids move out, or when I retire. Or it's like, no, you've got to live now. And and we've had some things happen in our lives, extremely recently that we're not going to share today, that we may never share, that have made us like rethink the importance of living now and. Don't put off your life. This is life untethered. We untethered from our old zip code and untethered from old habits and untethered, untethered from, you know, things that were holding us back. And let me just say, untethering doesn't mean that you untether from everything because no. there was a lot of great things and there's still a lot of great things in our lives. And it's really making sure that you focus on the good things and you focus on those positives and that you, you, you basically kind of weed out things that maybe aren't really serving you well. And that would well be the, said. yeah, thank you. That would be one of the things that I, I really, really have said on a consistent basis. And it's probably every single day that I'm always saying to Trevor, Trevor, get out of the cave. Because sometimes he can still get stuck yeah. in the cave. You know, he can get okay, stuck gotta, back gotta, in here. You gotta, you gotta work, you gotta you be gotta funny, work. you gotta, you gotta and, grind. And honestly, um, Camille, Camille Solar um, Taylor now, and um, she was our life coach and peak performance coach. And I still, I, I, say so much about her um, but she would say you need to take power in the pause and I say that on a daily basis to Trevor it is power in the pause and power in the pause doesn't mean hours and hours which sometimes that's a really good thing and we need to kind of get away and there's there's things she talks about I will post a link to her because she's got some great free like training and different um, YouTube channels and stuff but even she used to say to me just get out of your office, take your basketball, because I love to basketball, and go and shoot hoops for 10 minutes or something like that. Whatever it is, you just have to get outside and do and pause 
because today is all we have. We have no idea beyond totally. that. Like the only thing you have control over is right now. You can't do anything about the past. So feeling guilt about mistakes or sadness about mistakes, that doesn't, that doesn't serve you. And, and she, and Camille, like you told me this and, and, and I have both, I have issues with both with guilt and anxiety and anxiety is worrying about the future, something that you have no control. It's like, yes, you can steer your ship in a certain direction, but we really can't do anything about the future. You know, right now, I mean, yes, your choices will affect the future, but why worry about things that probably aren't going to happen? So don't waste your time in guilt and anxiety. And let's just, let's just start with the most, and I'll let Leela start with the story, but the most painful experience we've ever had in our life. And we hope that it will, will, will be the most painful thing that ever happens. I hope nothing worse happens. And that is the story of our, our daughter, Kirsten. You want to go or she might not be able to. So I'll let her jump in. I mean, I could just say it's the worst day ever. Um, yeah. Worst day ever. Yeah, I mean, and I'll just tell you real quick how it how it happened to me. Leela was, I think you were out of town. Where? Oh, you weren't out of town. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was, I remember I was like on a computer. I think I was on a computer video at the same time and I saw a message. Slow down. I know, I know the story. And I saw the message. He, he does, because you know, okay. it's one of those days and one of those times when you remember exactly what you were doing and every year I can remember exactly what we we're doing at exactly the same time. And I was actually, at the time I was a photographer and I was shooting a wedding um, and I, so I was gone. I was still at the gone. wedding. That's right. You were not. And Trevor was at, was editing our Jones cast, and which is our original, like, gosh, Jones cast. Original vlog. Our original vlog that started. Trevor started making when our kids were really little, and um, our he was at the time he was in our room with our son Nate, and Nate saw something on Facebook mm, that yep. said, "I think Kirsten's in trouble." Yeah, she saw a Facebook post. And, um, the, yeah. yeah, and um, I think Kirsten's in trouble, and I think something's not real good. And I think it was something like, you'll find me at the bottom of Whiteface. And, and Whiteface is a, like a little cliff in yeah. Simi Valley where we lived at the time. Yeah. And so me and Nate, at like 10 o'clock at night, we went hiking in the dark trying to find, we saw her, we found her car in the parking lot. And we started hiking and tried to find her and we couldn't and we didn't answer her phone and we just got, you know, those knots you get, we know something's bad. And we don't need to tell the whole story, but two days of searching, people from our church came out during church on a Sunday searching for her. And uh, I mean, I remember it was after several, it was the third morning in and... I just remember we were at a, the police, because the police, we'd gotten involved in search and rescue at this time. And I still remember when we were standing there and he just, we asked him what he thought and he told us, and he said, you need to go back out there and find her. And I remember when there was a whole search party, we had helicopters and stuff, everybody was searching for her and I get the phone call from our bishop from our church. And he's like, we found her and, and I told my wife and she just crumpled to the ground. And it was, it's the worst, worst ever. Like we lost our, we lost our 18 year old daughter to suicide and it's been 11 years now, I think yep. 11 years, you know, last month. And it's terrible. You, know, so you don't get over it. I mean, Lila was, Lila was checked out for like a year and a half or two years completely. I took two weeks off work. You had to go back to work. You keep grinding. And we dealt with it. We, we dealt with it very differently. Lila, you know, went to support groups and stuff. And I'm like, I'll just work and try to make the most of my life now. And I didn't, you know, and, and maybe I still haven't addressed it. I probably, I probably need more therapy or something, but, but everybody addresses stuff like that differently. And just your people are like, why would she do that? I mean, she, her boyfriend, you know, didn't want to be there anymore. This is the short version. And, and, and it's, and, and her, and, and Kirsten's adopted and her birth mother, you know, has some emotional issues and, you know, it's, we speculate Kirsten has some of the same things going on and, and, you know, it's a, you, yeah, there, and then you can go through the whole oh shoulda coulda woulda thing, but it doesn't it doesn't do any good, you know. And so you just gotta let it go. And we feel like the best way to honor her is to live our fullest lives. Now, as I painful think as that not was, not only that, but I remember we were sitting in the parking lot right before um, that day when we found her, and um, we decided then and there that we were going to be very open about our lives because we know that there's somebody that we could help by being so being open about it and and talking very openly about suicide and about 
who we are because I think when you look at our family and you look at who we were, you wouldn't think we, we didn't look like the face of a family that would go through the tragedy of losing a child through suicide. And you just you just don't know you, you don't anybody. No. And and, yeah. and as a result of that we've I've done several interviews, I've done a few magazine articles, a few other things, but still even less than six months ago, because I was very public about it, someone reached out to me and said, Hey, I'm in trouble. And for people just to have someone to talk to, like nobody can have any idea what it's like to lose a child way prematurely unless you've, unless you've been through it, you know? And because of that, people have been able to reach out to both of us, more Leela than me, yeah. but we've been able to, you know, be a, somebody for them to at least listen to, they can, they can empathize a little bit. And great advice, you know, I don't have any great advice for anybody, but just have somebody to talk to, um, you know, I and think can be if helpful. So, and if you're just even, if there's any questions, we're pretty darn open about it. If we you want to know, really if you want to... Um, if you need somebody to talk to. You know, if you know somebody that's going through it, let us know. And I think to me, I miss that kid, man. Yeah. Um, I can't Remember bring that? her back, yet I can honor and I can still be her mom. And I can still be her mom by using what we've been through to help other people. And that to me is anytime I have that chance to help somebody else, that's my chance to still be her mom. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, so that's, you know, that's a chapter in our life that's never going to close. And that's a pain we constantly carry. And it's, and it's hard. And people say time heals like, eh, uh, not, not really. No it, you get <laughs> it, You get a little better at managing the pain as time goes on is about, is about it. And then on a very related note, a little over a year later, my brother Jared, whose wife is the one that actually saw her, kind of found her, Tamara, my brother Jared took his life. He went up in the hill, the sea, you know, about four miles away in the same hills and took his life and left, you know, it's unclear exactly. He was afraid to be a bad, didn't be kids, you thought, thought he'd be a bad father, a husband, whatever. And that was like, that was dead. Like, and I was the last person that spoke to him. We were working together at a place and he was like, hey, Trevor, I gotta, I don't, I don't feel good. I like, emotionally or or physically it was kind of both and I, and he was like kind of freelancing where I was editing and I'm like dude you can't leave I'm worried about your job you want to get a, you want to get hired full time here right and he just, and he left and I'm stressing about his job and he's over there you know you know ending his life and that was that was it wasn't it wasn't any easier it was equally traumatic and equally devastating that's my brother he was my baby brother he was like what, 15 well, years younger than me it was like i would say the other part is is jared lived with our family yeah. too for a while i mean yeah. he was a very integral part of our kids lives and growing up and um again and i i'm still mad at him because he knew what we all went through right. like, what he thinking? knew what we all went through but his yeah. bottom line is he really he thought he had um a, a mental disorder. He like thought he died in his note, but and his nobody doubt, else knew or no, thought but, that. But he, that's what he thought, and he thought he was doing us a favor um, by not having us all live through that. So, yeah, it didn't do us any favors. There was no, it was no favors. No thanks, favors. thanks for nothing good. I, you know, still, like, I still miss that. Yeah, yeah, and you, you, you can't ring back. So there's, there's two things that have shaped our lives, like and I, but that I we wish, wish weren't there. We. No, you we know? totally wish. We and then we totally wish we weren't there. Dang and it. then I don't want to talk about that anymore. Do you? Well, no, I don't want okay. to talk about it anymore. But we'll talk with you guys if you need to talk yeah. to us. Yeah, post, we just can't, email us. You can go to. You what I would say is, it's what it's done for us is, you're looking at two of the most least judgmental people you're ever going to meet. And people that appreciate every breath we take, because you don't know how long we have here. So other and other things that are challenging. Here's a slightly slightly lighter <laughs> challenge. Um, those, those are the two worst days of our lives. Um, yeah. Here's a different kind of a challenge, and Kaylin probably won't watch this, but we have, we've got six kids, including Kirsten. Three of them are adopted, and Kaylin is the fifth child of a 19-year-old girl that had special needs, and Kaylin has special needs, and Kaylin is going so to be 30. Kaylin, yeah, Kaylin's gonna be 30 in a, in a week and a half here. Kaylin was born a pound at birth, 12 inches long, she was 26 weeks. And at the time, there's been a few little, a few, but very few. Um, yeah. she's, but she was the tiniest baby to ever live. And we adopted her and we didn't care. I mean, it's ultimately like she needed a home. She needed somebody to love her. She spent three and a half months in a neonatal intensive care unit. And she had 
heart surgery, she had lung surgery. She's had eye surgery, she's, she's had, had, she had a massive scar in her neck from her yeah. from IVs. Yeah, she's had been through a lot. Yeah. I mean in the when she was in the NICU, got several phone calls, you need to get to the hospital now. We don't think she's gonna make it through the night, all that type of stuff. But she did an she amazing did. Kaylin is gonna be thirty and And she's thriving here in this new life. Yeah. And She's, you know, we're doing, we're doing great. We're glad that we changed up from the tract house living we yeah. used to have, for sure. But, it's, but for us, it's a challenge. She will never move out. And we've arranged that she'll be with us until we die. And then we've got kids lined up when we go. Mm -hmm. It's because Kaylin would not do well in a group home. Like, we could put her in a group home. We'd never do that to her. No. Because for her, she needs, she needs mom and dad. Well, she needs family. I just, I just couldn't do that. I, you yeah. know, it's just, it's just not what I could do. And I... I've said as challenging as Keelan can be, there are things though that we have learned. Oh yeah. There's so many things that we have learned. I, I remember giving her this um, card one time that said, it was this big bear sprawled out on this deck and it says, you wear me out, but you're worth it. Yes. <laughs> and that's it. Sometimes it just takes a lot of our energy and it takes a lot of our things, uh, efforts. Our can. patients. I mean, unless you have a special needs kid, and Kaylin has Felix Hall syndrome and cerebral palsy. And, and, and actually recently diagnosed with probably some poss autism. Possibly some autism. So she's high functioning. She can read. We can leave her at home for a few days. We've left her as long as, I think, five or seven days one time. But we had people well, checking we on had her. Well, we had lots of, people lots of support. On her. Yeah. We can leave her overnight by herself now. She can feed herself. You with, can microwave a, it. with support. <laughs> but unless you have a special needs child like that, you have no idea. It, it's... It is challenging. It's challenging every day, you know, but, yeah. but we love her, we accept it, and we just, you know, live our lives accordingly. And, uh, you know, we roll with it. So that's yeah. another challenge, and it makes us want to live every day, and we want to make sure that Kaylin lives every day. Yes, that's, that, I think that's part of our thing with Kaylin is we want to make sure, like, our, it isn't just us. We need to make sure whenever we talk about any decision, even when we were buying this, we were... And doing the RV life, we brought Kaylin along for that trip. You'll see it because we need to make sure that she was going to be okay doing this. I oh, mean, yeah. that was a oh, big yeah. concern because change could be really hard and a lot she of likes, this. She likes consistency. Yeah. And honestly, it's been pretty amazing what she's been able to do with all the change. And we, we've we've yeah. been able to find amazing opportunities. People across the country that have just fallen in love with her, too. And yeah. Yeah. literally, she's made friends. And, yeah. and I hope that... Um, if we ever get to meet up with you, you, you will love Kaylin because she really has this lovable quality. And, and it teaches you things because, you know, yeah. we've got friends, especially these kids, or you run into them in public. And it's like, for us, it's like, no, you need help. Like Leela just told me a story yeah. today where somebody needed help in a store, you know, because because yeah. we, we, we get it. You know, yeah. it, it, does, it doesn't phase us at all. Like we get it. Yeah. And no, this, that, lady, this lady, her, her, other, her kid was big kid and she had a younger child in the cart and the kid was like losing it in the cereal aisle, but she couldn't leave the baby and try to, ch and I'm like, do you need help? I kind of get this. And I just said, can I just sit here? And, and she's like, she ended up telling me, she's like, yeah, well, there's something about some special cereal that this kid gets. And, you know, I knew he had some special disability. So we just get it. We get it. Now, the last thing I'll let Leela take, because this is, this is, this is Leela's thing. And she, she's had a challenge for the last two years now. A for the two years and we mentioned it in our very first video if you haven't watched our videos you should go back and watch all of them in the beginning to get a little more of our story but just well and this there's slightly backstory so i am the first woman i'm actually 57 right now um, looks pretty smoking hot right here's side note <laughs> i was afraid when i was in my 20s that i wouldn't be attracted to my wife when she was in her 50s but that's that's not an issue i mean check her out but i am the first woman in my family in I don't even know, many, many generations to live actually past the page of 55. So this started right at two years ago, I'm 57 now. Um, I thought I'm gonna go in. I, I, it was a scary thing for me mentally um, to think about making that, that 55. And I went in, just to get all the routine stuff, all, you know, just thinking routine. And when we got a phone call, the day um, after Christmas in the morning and said, you need to come back to the cancer or actually for the breast screening, we found something. We both knew that it wasn't it was good. At the beginning of another party. It was the beginning of another party. And 
bottom line, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, it was a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot. It's not like you think, oh, you have breast cancer and they put you in. It uh, was a lot of, the uh, worse than, I mean, it, when we lost Kirsten, the hardest part was not, not knowing, like days of not knowing. And for the cancer thing, it's like, oh, there's another test, means we need another test. So it was like, it's just months and months and months of months waiting to not know months. anything. It's like, am I gonna, am I gonna lose my wife in a, in a year? Like, you have, you have no idea. Yeah, and um, yeah, it was almost six months from, to the day from when I went in for the first testing till we, I went through surgery and I had a double mastectomy. It's, and it was ongoing almost a year, working on reconstruction, and it's not over. I, I wish I could just say, oh yeah, it was clear. it's She's clear, cured. Like, you never know. Um, I have the type of cancer, it's, it's invasive cancer, which means it was outside of my breast tissue and it um, had traveled. And so we just never know. So I go in frequently for blood tests and blood work and medication. Literally and all like kinds last week, she had a doctor's appointment this Monday, week or last week. Few yeah, days Monday, ago, yeah. just a little bit never ends. Ago, She's so. on drugs that, you know, that mess her up and. Yeah. So it's just another daily reminder that, what? You gotta live today. You live every day, you don't know. And I think that was my biggest thing. It, that was probably the final straw. At that time too, I had been working a lot. I mean, we, we you know, I was working like 60 hours a week, plus sometimes just all consuming and very, very successful in my job. Yet I felt like at times it was just all consuming and killing me. I would be with my, my kids or my grandkids or very family, stressful. and it was a very stressful job and I just couldn't be present. And that was, I think the, the reality is that I could die and leave my kids. 10 minutes till an appointment. I gotta go turn that ringer off. Keep talking. I'm not editing this, so. Uh, well, that was a really great moment. I wanted to make sure that, uh, <laughs> see, this is this is just real life. Yeah. Got a meeting in 10 minutes. But the, can well, you, you wanna wrap up? Well, I was just, I was in the middle of just saying, I heard about dying. <laughs> you know? Little things. Yeah, but truly it is, and it's still probably somewhere in my mind, you know, that 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 would happen and I just know that I have to do every day. Um, yep. I just have to do every day. I have to be living yep. living it every day and that's why it's just it's not worth putting anything off. Don't don't put it off. And for us it wasn't like, oh you got a gazillion bucks in the bank, just go change your whole life. It's like no, we uprooted our lives, sold our house in Southern California and left literally half of our business on the table in a in a different state. And it was like, I was like, God, are we just, she's like, let's do it. Like, okay. I just, I had to. And honestly, I would do it all again. It's been the happiest it's year of great. my life. Yeah. Um, one of the happiest years of my life. And, you know, we find joy in simple things. We saw fawn today. Yeah. And we have, like, Gee. we have a live, we have a for We bought a little piece of forest. of forest. We have a live cam. Check it out. There's a link for it. I'll put a link, you know, up yeah. there somewhere and below. We have a live cam and we saw a fawn that was probably born literally today because we saw the mom we actually saw the mom's belly this morning this this and you could see the fawn like moving in it yeah. and then hours later it's like ah there's there's a fawn running around in front of like you got a glimpse of it in the camera so that was kind of cool so so it's take a risk i'm not telling you to quit your job you know unless you hate it you know maybe you should you, know, you got to decide what's best for you and some people don't want to take the huge risk if you're content with your job in your life and where you are dude but if you're not Find a way to change it. Don't put it off. Let's li live now. Live now. And I, I, I don't regret anything that we've done. I, I am extremely happy. And we, we talk now about the future. And we talk about it just being, we have so much to honor. We have so much to give. And that's what I keep thinking about is. So if we can help you, you can actually go to the about section and hit the email and we'll yeah. reply. Totally. Or in the comments below. Anything like that. And um, I think that's it. So to see our entire adventure from the beginning, click right right down there. Do us a favor, give us a like and a subscribe. This was this is a hard one to do. We put this off for a long time and we yeah. hope that it gave you value. This isn't about us, it's about giving you values because we've been through so that you can you know, start living your life to the fullest. That's the whole point of this channel. Encourage you to live your fullest life. Mm -hmm. Hit subscribe right down there. We can't wait right, to share. Right down there. We can't wait to share our adventure with you.